Welcome to our monthly YouTube giveaway. We are giving away up to $125 Amazon gift cards to subscribers. To enter, you must be subscribed to this channel, like this video, and leave a comment below. Please check the video description and community post for the official rules and guidelines. Don't fall for any scams asking for your personal information, including phone number. The winners will be announced in a community post on the 4th of the following month with instructions on how to claim your prize, including a keyword that must be edited into the winning comment to avoid giving your winnings to someone else. Good luck. Shunta Shiraishi has always wanted to live a fulfilling adolescence but hasn't been able to do it because of the fact that people at his age barely notice his existence. It has come to a point that there is a rumor that those who are able to spot him have good fortune for the day. Observing all such things has forced Chunta to make peace with a quiet and isolated life where he gets satisfaction from reading his favorite manga and novels. But all of this changes when Najisa Kubo enters his life. Unlike Shiraishi's classmates who fail to notice him, Kubo always approaches him and makes sure that he does not feel unwanted or alone. Despite being a popular girl in class with a good academic record, she does not see Kunta like others. One morning in class, she takes a picture of his phone while he is researching how to be noticed when you're a background character. She threatens to share the photo unless he completes a challenge. She wants to test how invisible he is to others. She asks him to stand on the seat, arguing that no one will notice him. It takes him a while to stand, but unfortunately, his teacher immediately realizes what Shiraishi is up to without even turning his face to the class. The whole class starts to laugh at him. While this upsets him a little, Kubo feels that it was really a fun moment. She tells him that today he was the main character in class. He tells her that would make her the villainous, but she asks him not to be mean, but instead, he should call her the heroine. Make this channel the main character by subscribing. Only takes a moment. As she is walking home, one of her friends comments that she saw Shiraishi twice today, which means fortune is smiling on her. There is even a myth that guy in school who states he hasn't seen Shiraishi in a year. Kubo comments she can always find him without any difficulty. The following day, Kubo approaches Bunta seemingly angry about something. He offers milk to calm her down. She soon reveals that she is upset because of the fact that Shiraishi ignored her this morning when she said hi to him in front of her friends. In order to punish him, she wants to test if others will notice him if she sits on his lap. When she sits on his lap but his brain short circuits, she then pulls his cheeks and tells him he is funny and tells him she now forgives him for this morning. As soon as Shunda finds the opportunity, he runs away and sits on the floor just outside the classroom. There he asks himself why is Kuba using him for her games. In fact, he feels that she is probably just toying with him. Kubo somehow manages to listen to the question and tells him that it won't be fun if she tells him directly. He had mentioned to her he is so invincible that he has never been called on in class and wonders how that would feel. She raises her hand. When the teacher asks her for the answer, she pretends to not know it, but points to Shirai she'd answer the question. He gets nervous and doesn't know the answer either, but Kubo reveals her paper to him so he is correctly able to answer the question. Kubo tries to exchange pine contact with him, but he runs away when her friends approach her. However, they accidentally meet each other in the park that evening. She tells him that he is so invisible that even her phone doesn't detect his face when she tries to take a photo of him. So she wants to test how close the camera has to be to them for his face to be detected by the camera. That's when Kubo takes a very close selfie with him, pushing Shunta out of his comfort zone. While looking at the close selfie they took there, Kubo's face is red and she appears to barely hide her excitement. She tells him they should hang out sometime and ask to exchange contact information. Shiraishi is at his house looking at the selfie Kubo took and realizes this is the first time he has exchanged contact info with a classmate and thinks Kubo was just being nice when she said they should hang out sometime. But he gets another message from Kubo asking to hang out with him and he realizes that she actually does want to spend time with him. He replies back to her. As she is walking to the bathroom with her phone in her hand, she walks past her older sister Akina, who also notices that she seems too happy today. It is soon revealed that the reason for the reserve and shy smile on her face is Shiraishi's reply to her message in which he had agreed to spend more time with her. As he feels lazy in the class, Shiraishi contemplates dozing off since no one really notices what he is doing except for Kubo. But it turns out that she is herself fast asleep while the teacher is giving his lecture. Later that day, Shiraishi participates in a long-distance run where he notices that even his running partner struggle to keep track of him on the field. When he's going back to class, he finds Kubo walking towards him but tries to stand at a distance from her. When she inquires, Shiraishi reveals that his all sweaty right now and his clothes probably smell. Without pausing to think for a second, Kubo grabs his clothes to take a sniff. She appears to not mind the smell, but since Shiraishi is bothered by it, she offers him her aromatic wet tissues to clean his body. After he uses them, Kubo points that they now smell the same. 
The following day, Shirishi goes to the bookstore since the latest volume of his favorite manga is releasing. There he bumps into Kubo, who shows a lot of interest in his reading habits. In order to learn more about his favorite manga, she decides to buy the book. But Kumo realizes that the first volume is not available. Since they just found out that they live close to each other, Shireishi lets her borrow the first three volumes of the manga. Kubo realizes that they never bump into each other despite living so close to each other. After acquiring, she realizes that he leaves a little earlier than her for school. In order to spend more time with him, Kubo wakes up early and leaves for the school sooner than normal. She meets Shiraishi on her way and the two walk together, until they bump into Kubo's friends. Although Shiraishi is happy that Kubo accompanied him to school in the morning, he knows that nothing really changes in his life because of it. He remains invisible to most people and spends the entire day as he normally would. However, as he is returning home, he notices that people on the footpath appear to not notice him as well. While he's not bothered by it, Shiraishi's clothes is ruined when a speeding car goes past him, and the water from the puddle splashes all over him. Kubo has been following him and accompanying him to his home. But when he tries to open the door, Shiraishi realizes that the keys to the house are not with him. When he texts his mother, he learns that she won't be coming back home for the next two hours. Since his clothes are all dirty and he is wet, Shiraishi decides that he should just take a shower on the lawn. But Kubo feels that this isn't a good idea. She asks him to come to her house as he can get hot water there. Since no one is home at the moment, Shiraishi does not have to worry about anything. Shiraishi and Kubo then go to her house where she shows him her bathroom. However, she is embarrassed when he accidentally notices her undergarments that are kept in the bucket to be washed. Shiraishi pretends to not see anything because he is trying to make her feel better. While he takes a shower, Kubo brings him a change of clothes and a towel. She goes a step further and even washes his clothes for him. Shirashi is quite surprised and grateful for everything she does for him. Cool and notices Kubo while on his way up the stairs. They exchange greetings and Shirashi returns the tracksuit she had loaned him. She asks if it was small and when he says yes, she stares at him and inquires about his height. Shirashi tells her he is 5'4 and she responds that she is 5'3. She then takes a step on the stairs and compares their heights, telling him that the ideal difference between a couple is 6 inches. She pats him on the head tells him she doesn't really care about such things. When she takes a step down, she says she prefers their height difference, but then quickly tells him she is joking as she walks to her class. Shiraishi rushes home after class and tells Kubo he has plans, leaving her wondering what they are. A woman notices a child playing alone in a snow-covered park and decides to investigate. She inquires about the child's parents, but Shiraishi greets her. He tells her he is the child's brother, and she apologizes for not noticing him and thinking the child was alone. He then sits on the bench, concerned that everyone believes his brother Sita is alone in the park. Kubo arrives soon after and realizes Shiraishi's big plan was to take his brother to the playground. He requests that his brother greet Kubo, who is taken aback by the little kid's cuteness. Sita notices a drink in Kubo's hand and asks for it. Kubo hands the drink to the child who takes a sip and then asks Kubo to drink it as well. Sita then requests that his big brother take a sip as well. He is hesitant, but Kubo also requests that he have the drink. To appease his brother, he pretends to drink it. Kubo wonders if he didn't drink it because he was worried about an indirect kiss. Shiraishi is at home reading the latest manga when he decides to go to the store to get the bonus poster that comes with the latest issue of a weekly magazine. Because of the enhanced features of the model on the front cover, he is a little embarrassed to make the purchase, and is concerned that someone might see him holding it and misinterpret his motivation. He waits for people to leave the section so he can buy it. When he goes to pick up the magazine, he notices another magazine on top of it and realizes he has picked up a cultured magazine. He acknowledges that because he is invisible to everyone, no one will notice if he sneaks a small glimpse for research. The sales alert approaches him as he is about to open it and informs him that he might try looking at material that is more suitable for his age. He tries to explain that he was just going to put the magazine in the correct section, but she doesn't buy it and points out that he was just curious. He is surprised that someone noticed him in the store, and when he looks at her name tag, he notices that her last name is also Kubo. He considers that a coincidence and purchases the manga magazine before returning home and decides not to return to that bookstore for a while. Akina picks up Shiraishi's student card from the floor and realizes he goes to the same school as her litter sister, Najisa. She returns home and requests that her sister return the card to him at school. She also implies that she caught him reading a cultured magazine, which slightly shatters Najisa's heart and causes her to be concerned. Help heal her heart by hitting the subscribe button. She meets him to return his student ID card the next day, but makes him work for it. She tells him that her sister discovered it at a bookstore. Kubo is embarrassed and a little sad when she asks him if he likes well-endowed women. Shiraishi realizes that Kubo may have misunderstood the situation that transpired at the bookstore and attempts to clear it up. 
But before he can express his thoughts, she hands him the identification card and exits the classroom. She is extremely embarrassed as a result of the question she asked him. Akina asks Najisat if she has any Christmas plans while at home. Shiraishi sits in class, lost in thought about his utter lack of presence. Teachers forget to collect his handouts, and he has to announce his presence so others notice him on a daily basis. Kubo taps him on the shoulder and tells him the teacher wants to see him in the office. He realizes Kubo can always find him. When he returns, she reminds him of his promise to hang out with her, and they decide to spend the following Saturday together. He soon discovers they are meeting on Christmas. Because he is extremely nervous, he arrives 30 minutes before their meeting on Christmas Day. It's extremely difficult for him to be in crowded places because he constantly has to avoid people who don't see him. When a couple almost sits on him, poor guy barely escapes. Kubo arrives and grabs his hand. She notices how cold they are and asks him how long he waited for her. He lies and claims he only arrived a minute ago, but she refuses to let go of his hand until he reveals the truth. Kubo then hands him a bag containing his present. She asks him to buy her a gift because he didn't bring her one. He tells her to wait and that he'll be back in 15 minutes. He searches the mall for a gift for her but has no idea what to get her. He was also concerned that her hands would freeze while she waited for him in the cold. Kubo wonders when he will return as time passes. Sure, she arrives and apologizes for his lateness before handing her a pair of gloves. He tells her he was worried about her getting cold, but he was also late because he couldn't decide what color gloves to get her. Kubo loves the gift he got her and is pleased that he put so much thought into it. She wears the gloves but immediately states that she should have put more thought into what she got him because she just got him a yellow t-shirt that says main character. He tells her that he is overjoyed with the gift, especially since he was not expecting one from anyone. Shiraishi observes his little brother watch the same TV show for hours while trying to do the same superhero transformation. His mother tells him he used to do the same thing when he was a child, and she asks him to take his brother to the park to play. At the park, Sita continues to practice his transformation. Shiraishi looks around and notices no one else is there, so he asks his brother to watch him do the transformation correctly. His little brother is so impressed and thinks Shiraishi is so cool that he asks him to do it again. While the brothers are playing, Kubo has been secretly recording the whole thing. Shiraishi finally notices her when she plays back the recording, he is extremely embarrassed, but she asks them to continue so she can get more material to record. At school, Shiraishi notices he put on socks of varying lengths in the morning because he was half asleep. Even though he had gym class earlier, no one noticed his different length socks. Kubo and her friends enter the classroom and her friends ask her what she is getting them since it is almost Valentine's Day. Shiraishi looks at Kubo and feels something is different about her. So he continues to stare at her. She catches him staring at her red-handed, so she asks what he was looking at. Unable to refute her claim, he just quickly ends the conversation. During class, he continues to stare at her, trying to figure out what is different. He couldn't figure it out even though school had ended. The teacher asks Kubo to post a couple of printouts on the back wall. Shiraishi is happy no one noticed his different length socks, but just then, Kubo asks him to help her with a task. She is having trouble posting the papers because of her height, so she asks Shiraishi for help. He is confused because they are the same height. He tries but fails as well. He is also concerned about her seeing his socks, so he grabs a chair so he can reach higher. She asks him if he is self-conscious and then proceeds to point out the different lengths of his socks. He is shocked that she noticed, but she then quickly proceeds to get on the chair and fix the printout they posted. As he is watching her, he realizes she looks different because she is wearing tights and accidentally says it out loud. She is surprised he noticed. She tells him her socks were drying, so she wore tights today. She then teases him about looking at her and calls him a dirty boy. He makes the situation worse by telling her he was not staring at her legs, but was looking at her the whole day to see why she seemed different. Kubo tells him she understands that he was staring at her the whole day. As they continue their task, she asks him if he ever had the coffee from the convenience store and asks him to join her and walk home together. She has been waiting a long time to try the drink. At the store, Kubo was overwhelmed by the choices, so she asks Shiraishi if they should get different drinks so they can share them. He thinks she is toying with him and tells her he doesn't want a drink but will get a meat bun. She asks him to come to the counter with her because he is invisible, so if anything happens, he will swoop in and save her like a guardian angel. She struggles at the counter to order the drink, so she asks her invisible angel for help. He helps her, she's happy, and she tells him nobody noticed him. On their way home, Shiraishi observes how happy Kubo was drinking the coffee. She offers him a sip, but he refuses, stating he has his meat bun. He thinks he has avoided her trap, but she then takes a bite out of his meat bun, leaving him shocked. She then asks him to finish it while it is warm. He continues to walk home, hesitant at first to eat the bun, but then decides to eat it. Before he can take a bite, two women bump into him, causing him to drop the bun. 
The women then wonder if they hit something or if it was their imagination. It's Valentine's Day, and the whole school is busy exchanging gifts while Shureishi sits alone at his desk. For him, it's just another ordinary day. He recalls how, as a child, the teachers would hand out candy to everyone but forget he existed. He puts his hands on his desk and notices something. He looks to find a bag of candy. He looks around to see if someone has forgotten their candy at his desk as he believes there is no one who would give him candy. He thinks for a second that maybe it was Kubo, but then smashes his head into the desk to squash that thought. Kubo witnesses the incident and comes to ask him if he is okay. He digs deep to get the courage to ask her if she left the candy, but then proceeds to ask her about the weather. Kubo informs him that it is Valentine's Day and inquires whether he has ever received a chocolate from anyone. He answers no. She is visibly pleased and tells him that some girl left a bag of sweets on his desk. She is aware that the girl put a lot of effort into making the gift and requests that he enjoy it. He asks her who the girl was. She states she knows but won't tell him, and then she leaves. Then there is a flashback of Kubo at her house, bringing groceries home to make Valentine's sweets. Her sister is in terror that Kubo is going to make something because she always burns the pancakes and doesn't know the difference between lettuce and cabbage. She sees her little sister try her best to make the sweets, but the finished products look like something out of a horror film. Akina then asks her who the special someone is, but Kubo doesn't respond. Akina then tells her she is also making cookies, so if Kubo wants to follow along, she can. They finish making the cookies, even though Kubo's cookies looked somewhat deformed. When her sister tries them, she tells her that her cookies taste better because she put love in them. And she tells her to give the middle cookie to the special someone because it looks aesthetically pleasing. Kubo then finishes packing the cookies and thanks her sister for help, but Akina continues to tease her about her love interest. Shiraishi is at his house wondering who gave him the gift, and he takes a bite and loves it. Shiraishi prefers to stay alone and likes to just eat his lunch by himself. He often finds a spot where he can quietly eat his meal. He does the same on an ordinary day as well, but unlike others, Kubo manages to find him. She asks to eat lunch together. All of her friends are busy with committee meetings. When she sees Shireishi's lunch, she is intrigued by the tasty-looking octopus sausages and rolled omelets. Kubo is so lost in her thoughts that she does not realize that Shireishi has noticed her staring at his lunchbox. He naturally offers to share the meal with him, which instantly makes Kubo happy. She tries to feed food to him, but he grabs it and moves slightly further away from her to eat it. He then grabs his rolled omelets to give to her, but she grabs his hand and has him feed it to her. She looks at him and eats it, causing him to become incredibly embarrassed. Kubo tells him that she will make him something and asks to eat together again. She again looks at his lunchbox and grabs another bite. Kubo really enjoys the mouth-watering food and talking about mundane things with Shiraishi. The conversation eventually turns to their favorite foods and Shiraishi reveals that he loves hamburger steak. As he sits next to her, finishing his lunch, he realizes this is the first time he has eaten lunch at school with someone else. Later that day after school, Kubo visits a restaurant with Hazuki and Tamao. They notice that Kubo has gotten really cute lately and mention that she is glowing for some reason. This makes Tamo ask Kubo if she has a crush on someone. Interestingly, Hazuki reveals that their friend is yet to fall in love and has not kissed anyone yet. Tomino opens up about her embarrassing childhood memory when she recalls wanting to marry her own father when she was in the first grade. The conversation eventually turns toward Kubo again when Tamo asks if she has someone in her life who she wants to talk to a lot and keep looking out for. Shiraishi immediately comes to mind and Kubo feels embarrassed. Tamo and Hazuki notice her reaction and realize that their friend does have a crush after all. When they ask about the mysterious boy again, she reveals his name, leaving the dude looking disappointed. Tamo questions Kubo's choice and wonders why she likes a boy who is not athletically or academically gifted. Kubo naturally does not like what she says and stops her from badmouthing her crush. Tomo apologizes and Kubo realizes she was perhaps too harsh. Hazuki inquires about the Shiraishi's strong points, but Kubo states that they are confidential, prompting Hazuki to realize that she is extremely possessive of him. Shiraishi arrives at class the next day to find Kubo already there listening to music. She grabs an earpiece and puts it in his ear, then asks him to listen with her. She asked him to scooch over so they could share the chair as well. She finishes the song and then tells him that she wants to listen to the type of music he likes. After his initial resistance, he plays a song from the anime adaptation of the manga he had let her borrow. She listens to him talk about the source material, then goes home and watches the anime. Exactly one month after Valentine's Day, people give reciprocal gifts to those who bought them a present on February 14th. Celebrated annually on March 14 since 1978, the White Day was first observed in Japan, but has over the decades become a common occasion to celebrate love in several other Asian countries. Shirashi has not forgotten that a mysterious admirer left cookies on his seat on Valentine's Day. 
Therefore, he buys a box of sweets for the same person. But there is one small problem. He has no clue about the girl who left the gift for him. Since Shiraishi knows that Kumo is aware of this mysterious admirer, he later talks to her at school and hands over the box of sweets. Kubo initially does not realize that Shiraishi is giving her sweets because he does not realize that the sweets were made by her, so when he eventually explains himself, she is quite surprised. Instead of telling Shiraishi the truth, Kubo acts as if she cannot reveal the name of the secret admirer as well. When Shiraishi finally asks her, she responds by asking if he would appreciate receiving a Valentine's Day gift from her. When he agrees, Kubo feels satisfied and simply walks away. Shiraishi fails to understand the obvious hint and asks her about the secret admirer again. But Kubo does not tell him anything, and she rightly blames him for not being able to figure out the answer himself. Shiraishi Khan has gotten so used to being invisible to his classmates that it does not surprise him anymore that his people sometimes look for him when he is sitting right in front of them. When Tamao was looking for him one morning, Kubo, who has noticed Shiraishi, refuses to tell her where their friend is. Tamo wanted to pray to Shiraishi for Lux since the myth about him is still prevalent in school. She then walks over to his desk and fixes his hair because he had bed head and she thought he'd be embarrassed if someone saw him like that. She then sits at her desk and thinks about how cute he looked with the bed head. Later that evening, Shiraishi visits the market. He is painfully aware of the fact that he cannot drop anything while in a public space since people who end up finding his things cannot see him even when he is standing next to them. But things take a turn for the worse this time when he drops his handkerchief. A blue-haired girl immediately picks it up and return it to Shiraishi. He is taken aback by the fact that the girl was able to notice him and starts feeling that he has started becoming quite visible lately. But it turns out that the girl is actually named Saki, and she is there with Magus's older sister Akina. Now Akina has not forgotten the magazine incident at the bookstore and immediately recognizes Shiraishi as Nagisa's friend. Interestingly, Saki is Nagisa's younger sister and Akina even shares Nagisa's middle school photo to show how similar the two sisters look. She sends him Magus's photo after exchanging contacts with Pine. When Akina returns home with Saki, she teases Najisa by mentioning Shiraishi. Saki tells her that he told her she would become as cute as Najisa when she is older. Meanwhile, Shiraishi's mother warns him that she will take away his games if his grades fall any further. Therefore, he starts studying very seriously the following day. But he struggles with a few math questions and has no clue how to solve them. Luckily, Kubo notices him struggling with the problems in the library and offers to be his teacher. She borrows the librarian's glasses to make herself look the part. That day, Shiraishi not only understands those math questions but also realizes that Kubo is a really good teacher. The day after he stays at home to recover from a fever, Kubo texts him to check how he is feeling. His little brother Sita tabs his phone and sends the I miss you emoji. Kubo is shocked to see it but immediately receives another message telling her that it was Sita who sent the previous message. She then sends him a lonely without you emoji but follows it up with my sister send the last message. Shiraishi finally goes back to school. Unfortunately, he is late for the first class, and when he observes that everyone is already busy, he decides to wait for the second period to sneak into the class. As he is sitting next to the door, Kuba comes out and notices him. She seems unwell and is about to fall on Shirashi, but is luckily able to slow down his fall thanks to the support of a wall. It turns out that Kubo has a very high fever and is currently feeling dizzy. She tells Shirashi that she is going to the medical room to meet the nurse. Shiraishi feels that she should not go alone and asks her to go with someone from the class so that she is safe. But Kubo explains that there is a quiz going on in the class right now, so she doesn't seem to want to disturb anyone. Shiraishi had already decided to attend class beginning with the second period, so he feels obligated to assist her. He puts his arm around Kubo, who is glad to learn that Shiraishi is going to accompany her to the medical room. When they finally get there, Kubo's dizziness has only gotten worse than before, so Shiraishi immediately puts her on the bed. As the nurse is not there currently, he is about to check her temperature. But she holds out his arm to thank her. As their hands meet, he notices that she is quite warm. But when he turns around to see her, he is shocked to learn that Kubo has already fallen asleep. The nurse arrives soon afterward, and Shiraishi explains the whole scenario so that his friend gets the help she needs as soon as possible. As he walks out of the room, he feels like the main character for the first time. Please like and subscribe. The next part will be pinned below when complete. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the other recaps on the channel.